Hi, welcome to What are Gaussian Errors? Uncertainties on scientific results are often reported in terms of something called Gaussian Errors. So for example, if you see a measurement of the distance to a star reported as 141 plus or minus 0 0.8 light years, that result is likely utilizing a Gaussian error bar. Gaussian errors have mathematical properties that make them applicable or approximately applicable to a wide variety of situations. And they're not very intuitive. Let's try to do something about that. In this video, we'll just say what Gaussian errors are, the conditions under which they arise, how they arise, and how to interpret and use them will feature in future videos. Okay, let's start by asking, what's a Gaussian? Or more properly, what's a Gaussian distribution? So it's a curve that looks like this. Here we've called this Gaussian function f. The Gaussian distribution is also called the normal distribution. It extends on the x-axis from minus infinity to plus infinity, although we've plotted it only in a finite range. Here's a mathematical formula for a Gaussian distribution. It's a function of x, and it also takes two parameters, mu and sigma. The parameter mu determines where the peak of the curve is. If you look at this formula, you can see that it is symmetric in x about mu. The second parameter is sigma. It is a measure of how wide the distribution is. The distance sigma relative to the curve is shown in the plot at right. While not at all obvious, the area under this curve, if you looked at the whole range from x equals minus infinity to x equals plus infinity, is 1. If sigma changes, both the width and the height are affected. Sigma appears twice in the formula. The sigma in the exponent controls the width of the peak and the sigma in the factor out front controls the height. If sigma changes, the change in height counteracts the change in width to keep the area under the curve 1. Here we compare our original curve to one where sigma was increased by 50%, plotted in red. It is 50% wider and the height has dropped to compensate. The area under a Gaussian curve within one sigma of the peak is about 68% of the total. The area within two sigma is about 95% of the total, and the area within three sigma is about 99.7% of the total. Okay, so what does this have to do with measurement errors? Let's say we're measuring some quantity q. This could be something like the mass of a fundamental particle, the distance to a star, the density of birds of a certain species in a certain region, etc. We'll call the true value of that quantity q true and the measured value q measured. We don't know q true. q measured is the value we get from our experiment. Now, due to measurement errors, q measured will not be exactly the same as q true. But if the measurement is done reasonably well, q measured should be in the vicinity of q true. And under certain conditions that we'll see in later videos, q measured will be Gaussian distributed around q true. Okay, what does that mean? Let's say we measured q many, many times. Call each time a trial. In each trial, we get a value for q measured. Each value q measured will differ from q true by some amount, the error for that trial. We don't know the error for a given trial. We know the measured value, as that is the result of our experiment. But we can't know the error as well, as that would imply that we know the true value, which we definitely do not know. The error is affected by many factors, and we take it as a random variable. It varies randomly from trial to trial. 
Let's say the errors between trials are independent. That means that the error on one trial does not affect the errors on other trials. Let's plot the density of results Q measured as they relate to Q true. Let's say that this is the value of Q true. Remember, in reality, we do not know this value. If the errors are Gaussian distributed, or Gaussian for short, the values of Q measured from many trials would follow this curve. Most trials would have Q measured fall near Q true, but a few would fall far away, where far away means much greater than one sigma away. Here we have labeled sigma as sigma Q on the plot, just to emphasize that it is the width of the Gaussian for this particular quantity Q that we're measuring. To find the probability that Q measured falls in a certain range, we look at the area under the curve in that range. On average, approximately 68% of measurements would have Q measured fall within one sigma of Q true. On average, approximately 95% of measurements would fall within two sigma of Q true, and approximately 99.7% would fall within three sigma, on average. As we said, the total area under the curve is one. This is reflective of the fact that the probability of Q measured taking on some value between minus infinity and infinity is 100%. Q measured must fall somewhere. Note that Q measured can fall arbitrarily far away from Q true. It's just very rare for it to fall more than a few sigma away from Q true. Also note that the error is Q measured minus Q true. So the errors are Gaussian distributed around zero. Well, that is all quite mysterious. Why would the error distribution take this form? Okay, so coming up in the next videos, the conditions under which Gaussian errors arise and simulations to show how this happens.